didn't actually talk while streaming, but now I'm back. Yeah, so um, basically, I'm just trying to um, do a Unity kind of a text-based RPG. So it's like you have a scenario, uh, a story, then you click a decision, yes or no. There might be monsters to fight, but that's maybe later on we'll implement this. Yeah, I'm trying to create a like a simple game so that like for beginners in Unity, they can just like do a simple game and they feel happy that they created something. And actually, you don't have to be very complicated to create a game. Uh, what's most important in the game is really the um, the gameplay, the concept behind it. Like you will need people to make decisions and you will want people to feel that they have accomplished something at the end of it. So I guess a text-based RPG is actually good enough because uh, this means that um, there's actually quite a lot of things that you can decide and based on your decisions, it will affect the eventual outcome. So let's try, let's try to continue this. So just now I was creating the button and uh, yeah, I wanted to create a particle system. So yeah, what happened to my particle system? Okay, let's try again. Mm. Well, it was displaying just now. Maybe it's under game. No. Particle system pause restart. Let's try again. Let's try again under game. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, I'm just creating some aesthetics for the gameplay. Actually, these are not really important. Yeah, the main thing is really that there's a button that you can navigate to. Yeah, and the good thing about Unity is you can do once, you can actually export it out to like handphone and so on. Yeah, handphone will be something like, uh, let's see, where's my handphone? 16 to 9 maybe? Will be no, no, sorry, handphone is not this dimension. I think smartphone might be this kind. 1080 to 1, uh, it will be this kind. So if you want to create for smartphone, it will be for something like that. But here we are doing for WebGL. So WebGL will be something like this. Okay. So this will be the WebGL uh, creation for this. So I have my tech background. It should look like this when I do. So if I go to the mobile phone, it will still look okay because uh, my background, I make it big enough. So that's the point of having like a bigger background. So actually, what I really want to do now is I want to like, create a, create little blobs that that it'll be good if the blobs actually like run through this circuit like that. So I mean, I could create a list of waypoints for the blobs to follow through, but I'm a bit lazy right now. <laughs> and maybe this image was just taken from some random place. Yeah, what I just want to do is to just create a particle system and yeah, this is the particle system here. So maybe my background, I, I take it out first. I just focus on the particle system. Restarts. Everything. Nothing. Okay. Um, somehow the particles are like kind of missing. Yeah, it's supposed to come out already. Okay, okay, what? Let's delete this, create a new particle system. Okay, very good. So we have a particle system here. And I want to do my start size, start time, start speed. So the start speed will be one and then between two constants, one, two. Okay, this looks rather good already. If we could get this to you know play this on the background. We will need this particle to appear like in front of our I think this is pretty nice already. Yeah, we just need these particles to appear in front of the background. So I see right now if I on my background, do my particles come out? It looks like my particles got hidden behind the uh got hidden behind the particle. So I suspect maybe I'll change this to default. This might appear. Might. Okay, it didn't. So it means that maybe it's a layering effect. Or it could be that I shouldn't put this particular system in the canvas. I should put it offside. Okay. 
Okay, so let's see what will happen if I do that. Okay, let's just take away the background and the canvas. Let's just take this away. And we'll just see whether the articles appear. Okay, it kind of didn't appear, which is kind of weird. Yeah, it's supposed to appear. So let's just zoom in on the particle system. See, it's appearing, but it's too tiny, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I'll probably need to give the particle system like a bigger. No, no, okay, it's not it. Could be that I just need to. Gonna increase it. We're increasing it. Okay, let's, let's have to Google it to make particle system appear in front of background. Okay. Z to be the same as your main camera. Okay, so it means that the main camera is at minus 10 and this particle system must be minus 10 also. Okay, then I guess we could put it back in the canvas. Yeah, because in this case, oh nice, uh, we just need the camera, because if you look at the 3D point of view, oh, where's my camera? My camera is here. Just thinking whether, you know, I can show my gizmos. Yeah, I like to toggle all gizmos in the same view. So this is my camera. And then the camera is actually viewing, this is an orthographic camera. I could actually change the size of this camera to be two, then it would like reduce the orthographic size. But actually it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we can click the far end to be at 100. And this doesn't really affect now because I'm using everything on the canvas view. So it's kind of cool to see to see how this works. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I mean if you want to do a game that doesn't like because my canvas is my camera is like clipped to this canvas already so everything is on the canvas but suppose i do have some objects that are not on the canvas like maybe i have like i don't know i just add an object random object that is not on the canvas like this horizontal blue bar okay so if we were to go back to 2d we play this. See the blue bar is here. So this blue bar, we can actually see that the blue bar is here. This is like we can configure this, but this can be also like like an interactable object, like some platformers and stuff like that. You can see that this is uh not in the camera view, but you can see it over here. So this is another way to create like game objects if you don't want to use canvas. But for simplicity, I think just using canvas for this entire text-based RPG is actually sufficient because we don't really expect a lot of like things to happen. Like we just have buttons. Like if you need to move your character, then this can be your character. And then when you when you toggle your camera's uh, properties, you will see that. Okay, I. Maybe I expand the scale a bit. 10, 10. Yeah, if you toggle your camera's properties, you will see that, let's say if my camera is size 7, size 8, size 10, you see your square is actually decreasing in size. Yeah, you can also adjust the camera to like make the object appear that it's moving away. Yeah, that's one way to do it. So you see if the object can be moving. But usually what we do is... Uh, we just adjust the camera. So you can also go to perspective view. Uh, in perspective view, the camera is like just taking this entire thing. You can do horizontal axis. Usually we I don't really use perspective. Yeah, perspective is like you can view so look at that, look at that, look at that square going up and down. Yeah, but we don't need to use this. We have yes, go back to orthographic. Usually for my games, I use orthographic, and that's good enough already. Yeah, I delete away this. I don't need this. So I'm, I'm 
my text background, text background, and I'll just turn it on. We'll go back to my canvas, take a look, and see whether the oh look at that. Okay, so there's one thing that I'm to adjust is like I don't quite like the fact that my tech walls is like being blocked by the uh, the if anything this particular effect should go below the tech walls. So I'm just thinking whether I can you know adjust it such that it appears above the background but below the layout. So you see my layout goes here. My layout goes all the way to the top, maybe. Make particle system appear behind some objects and above some. Yeah, let's just try to see whether we can we can sort out the layering options of the, the particle. I see you can change the camera directly. It's Korean text. Order layer zero, particle system renderer, order in layer one. Okay, so this is a default layer, default, default. Yeah, let's just go under default also. So let's go default for everything. Mm. Yes, okay. So I want my particle system to appear in front of the background, and um, so my background is order layer zero, order one. This has to be order one. This layout will be order two. I guess it's not that great because like I'm using background here, particle system here. But all these are on the canvas. Should I just put them down here? Back to the main camera. And I can do this order zero. Order one. The canvas can be the whole canvas can be order two, I guess. Whole canvas can be ordered to you. see whether this works. Where is this canvas located? It has zero zero ninety. I want my this order to be okay. Maybe if I put order zero, so it's the reverse order one. Okay. Maybe the lower the number, the higher the okay. Let's take a look. Let's take a look in my canvas. I have my layout. Okay, let's see. Unity order in layer.
I wonder what's the priority like. Is the sorting layer the higher the order the better? Or the lower the order the better? Render sorting layers in the order they appear in the list. Okay, order in layer sets the render order of this sorting group within its sorting layer. Lower values first. So they appear before renderers with higher values. So it means that if I just order it by two. Okay, so the background is the lowest order. Okay, I guess I don't know why because this is layer default. UI will always appear above everything else. So in my renderer here, my order here C one. It should appear this actually should appear I'm not too sure why this thing is blocking everything. One, two, three, one more time. Okay, let's just see the, the view here. Camera is here. My background moves to minus nine. We just, just just moving it away would already make the entire thing blocked. So if I put this at zero, okay, I all my wondering why it didn't change the layers because the layers now default but this canvas if the layers at UI okay let's just search for it default UI layer which is rendered first unity uh, let's just check it To encounter the mix is not modern UI. The larger the later it will be rendered. So let's see if, if my background is here. Okay, this is the game, right? This is the game. If my background, if my background is here, my particle system is here, my canvas is here, I have my buttons here. Let's see my layout. Okay, what order is it rendered in? Still seems to be the size. Okay. I need to know how to change the okay, order layer that is rendered. So your uh, canvas here has probably a renderer. Okay. It's not here. Okay, under canvas, yeah, the order layer. The later the the layer the yeah, this three. The later the layer, the so it means that someone up there is taking order two. So if this one is labeled as two, my particle system should be labeled as V one, and my tech background should be order zero. Yeah, this this should work already. Oh, that's cool. Okay, now my particle system is not shown. Okay. Maybe that I need to order it to a later one. Or if I remove the tech background, is it showing? Okay, 
okay, where is my particle system? My particle system is here. Is that the camera there? I will shift it to minus 9, shift it to 0, 10, minus 10. Somehow it's not exactly like showing this, but maybe if I go to particle system here, yeah, if I put it on the canvas, it's working. Yeah, order in layer 1, and then this layout order in layer will be. So if the other layer is one here, it will appear behind the words, which is the effect that I want. But if the other layer is three, it will appear in front of the words. Very good. Okay, we have sorted out two. It will appear the same layer, but it will appear behind the words because it's rendered later. But if I would put like other layer two, it appears at the same time because it's rendered later. I guess. I guess if I shift this position. Well, it doesn't really change. Yeah, it's best to just sort out by the order in layer. So let's just put the order as one so that this appears before the layout. This layout is governed by the canvas position, which is order in layer two. My order in layer is zero, it will appear. Ah, yeah, see, I got this figured out. So this order in layer will be two. Okay, my tech background, order in layer will be zero. It should be rendered last. Okay, so now I hope I, I hope the, the changes are safe. Because sometimes if you do certain things with Unity when the thing is running, it doesn't really save your changes. See, it doesn't save my changes right now. So it means I need to redo my changes again. So in my tech background, zero. Particular system should go here. Particular system, my order should be one. And canvas here, my order should be two. Okay, this should work. So there's too many sparks coming out of this particular system, so I got to change the number of change the number. I don't really like this color, so maybe you can change it to a slight yellowish tinge to differentiate it. Okay, maybe what I can do is I can I can scale between two colors. This and this. Yeah, it will look like a spark. You can also use these particle effects to create explosions. It's pretty fun to see the kind of effects you can create with uh, particle effects. I'm glad they have it as a default in Unity. It's very useful, these particle effects. So one thing is like that. The number of particles is a little too much. Twenty is fine. Simulation speed maybe a bit slower. I think I think it's fine. Two and one maybe. The speed is a bit slow here. The speed of the particle can be a bit faster. I think 5 and 2 was fine. Yeah, just now the one was fine. Maybe I give it a bit more particles, 30. Starling mode, no, no need. Stop action, no need. Emission rate, 5. Yeah, it'd be cool if this like lights can blink a bit. Let's try it. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool already. Maximize some play, let's visualize the effect of this. Yeah. Just thinking whether I want to you know do a different color for for the words, like let them glow or something. Yeah. Okay, so over here, when the mouse over, I want the start text to change color. So button text change color 
on mouse over Unity. Yeah, I'll just copy this one here. So let's go to a script. Create C sharp script. Mouse over button. And I should just maybe call it button button because the script needs to be of the same name as the object that we are creating. So this is a button. Uh, this is what I remember also. We need to in incorporate this mono behavior, eye pointer, yeah, this, this kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Stuff like this is. Yeah. So we have public text, text. Yeah, I guess we need to use unityengine.ui also. Okay, because we're using text. And we also need to use using the engine dot event systems because we are using the event system to enter the eye pointer, enter an eye pointer exit. <coughs> so over here, I want it to be green. Or I can also have a public color thirty two here. Enter, enter color and exit color. Yeah, then we can actually like create our own. So here will be. Enter color. Here will be exit color. Yep, so this should do it for the button class. Now we can just put this button inside. Script has an error, invalid token. Okay, that means I miss out a bracket, is it? I have one extra bracket. Yep. Yeah, this should do it. Here, okay, the text does not exist in the following context. Okay, so what I do now is I will put this script onto the button itself. We add the script onto the button. Okay, then we have uh, the text that we want is over here. Exit color will be white. Once we enter it, the color will be green, like greenish. I think somewhere about here. About here, I guess. About here is good. I really like how Unity allows you to do all this customization. It's so cool. So cool, yeah. Okay, I suspect that my color 32 has an A of 0, so I need to do this. Yeah, this happens quite often because, yeah. okay, so this works. They really should do a, a better job at this kind of Over here, so we can actually yeah, so this one makes a text change color. Whoa, I, I like it. My screen seems like the color green turns to purple. I'm not sure about that. Let's see, oh, can't really see the yeah, it looks like it turned to purple, but it's fine. Yeah, so this is tech wars, this is the main menu. So we're just going to duplicate this scene create a few others so maybe this one will be this one will be room one okay so in room one we don't want the particle system so uh one thing we should do is we should create prefabs now in case you want to reuse certain objects like buttons maybe yeah so a button can be a prefab prefab not prefab prefab Royalty free background image 
images royalty free background image Let's try to search for some tech stuff for background images. Yeah, I want the context to be the person is like maybe in a room or something. Whoa, this is pretty cool. This can actually be like. I like that they have this kind of. Oh, this is a text now. I should save images. Text menu. Text game. Background. Okay, we click right. Text room background. So this represents that it's a room. So in a room, you have to make certain decisions. And this kind of represents the decisions you need to make. So we have this images. Text room background. We drag it in here. Have we dragged it? It's kind of weird. I mean, it's supposed to be the drag this inside. So the tech room background, I'll put it here. So this is in room one. Uh, room one, we have a canvas with a certain layout. Okay, so. Okay, I want to take away this text right now and replace it with text room. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So cool. So cool. Yeah, I should scale it down a bit so that I can see the sides. Is there a name vector stock at the side? I got to, got to, I got to crop it. I don't really want this vector stock to appear. So okay, let's enlarge this thing as fast as we can. Oh, I realized something. I don't have to do it here. I can do it here as well. So when in the sprite editor, we can actually change where we want to cut the sprite. So we can cut the sprite here as well. So maybe we can cut the sprite here like that. Yeah, this will be our sprite. So we can apply this and then the sprite will be changed in the sprite editor. And you can see that the sprite now is like that. So okay, wait a minute. Slice. I should slice it actually. Slice. Maybe we need to slice our sprite. Okay. I guess this applies the physics shape to the sprite editor, but what I want to do is I want to slice it. Like I want to slice my sprite. Do the center. No, I want it to generate physics shape. Okay, uh don't have to change this. Uh, maybe it's time to just Google it. How to slice a sprite in Unity? I like to you know just delete certain parts of it.
Mm, so only when multiple then you can do like grid by cell count this is this i'm familiar with so let's see Okay, I guess this is not the thing that I want to do. Crop image in Unity. I can use a mask to do this. Okay, so it looks like it's still under Sprite Editor. Still under Sprite Editor. Apply. Okay, we slice. Maybe we don't do automatic. We just do it by cell size. Oh, that's too much. That's too much. Oh, I know, I know how to do it. You can do, you can do padding. So maybe the padding, I do a padding of ten. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is a little tedious. I thought that was a. Interesting. I thought that was an easier way to do it. Okay, so this was the top. So the offset is for the top bar and the padding is for the bottom bar. Okay, trim. I guess this should do it. I hope. There we go. This is slice up the top and the bottom already. So this is already very good. I love Unity. So many cool functions you can do. Yeah, it would be good if you know the background can scale with the canvas, I guess. So I'm just gonna put it in. And you know, if this scales with the canvas, it means regardless of how I but it doesn't exactly do what I thought it would do. I should clear this. Okay, so if let's say it scales with the canvas, no matter how I scale it, the canvas will still show the same thing. So it's better for me to put uh, my image in the canvas so that I don't have this issue. Okay, so right now I just want to fit this thing to my canvas shape. I mean to, to be flexible in terms of like the ship's handling 
is better for your image to be in the canvas itself and set your canvas to scale to screen size. I learned it the hard way because I, I can recreate multiple dimensions, uh, multiple kind of uh, resolutions for my game. And see, I mean, certain resolutions you have no image. Okay. So, so in certain resolutions, you don't really have the image or you have this bar up here, which means that actually you need to create some sort of a buffer zone. If not, if not for those kind of resolutions, you will have issues. Yeah. I mean, this one no choice because this is a different resolution altogether. But if we just go for this resolution, yeah. I'm trying my best not to move this too much yeah, maybe this is good enough because I like the two spinning wheels at the side those two are going to be keeping my game okay so if we exit a little bit somehow it's able to adjust pretty well okay only this we, we can do away with that because there's a portrait Yeah, so the good thing about this background is that I can then easily just change the color and then there will be different rooms like that, you see? And if I say you are in danger, your room can be like red color. No, look at that. So cool. Okay, uh, let's go back to our default color, maybe white. Yeah, so this is the room, okay? background and in the layout here okay, I, I do still need to have a text but I would like to have a text with a sort of maybe maybe we can put an image on this text here oh no we can't do that uh, maybe I have to add another UI image here at the top here and then in this image here put the text okay in this UI image the color will be slightly translucent is to just create a translucent kind of screen. Or oh, actually, I realized something. I can just use a button. I can use source image as my button. I do have a very nice button that I can use. Like this kind of glass panel. This glass panel. Okay, go back to scene. We can actually expand this glass panel here. Okay, the text will need to fit to the need to centralize. Yeah, let's centralize the text. And we actually don't really want the we don't really want the golden shadow. We can delete this. We don't want the text to be so big also, so maybe the max size will be like 30. Okay, and over here. Uh, yeah, this is blue. Okay, we can actually make this fit straight away to the. Okay, almost fit to the thing. Not entirely, but almost fit. You enter a room. There is a light. Will you do? okay? So, so uh, there are two ways we can go about doing this. We can basically do a sort of like for every room, you create a new room and then you link the rooms up one by one. Or what we can do is we can also use a script like auto generate a room. And then uh, at the bottom, the buttons will be using a script to generate as well the buttons of decisions that you make. Okay, but uh, let's try to do things simply. We won't use a script to generate those buttons, although in the future, definitely um, that will be a consideration. Okay, let's just generate a few sample rooms, okay? Because, I mean, I just want to let people know how to do this. So maybe in... Instead of just having a layout like that, okay, we just do a 
Actually, we can just duplicate this one. So this one is the body. If we duplicate this, we will get a head. Okay. And this head uh, dimensions, we can change it. Actually, we can afford to go a bit bigger, right? Oh wait, this body we can go a bit bigger as well. Okay, yeah, I think we can just speed. Just speed, change a little bit. So, well, I don't like the text to be too close to the center, uh, too close to the sides. Okay, so there's a, a small issue here. Um, if I were to use this glass panel UI, it is kind of translucent, so it doesn't really like capture my thing well. I think what I could do is maybe I'll use a, a background that is not exactly translucent, maybe a, a bar horizontal. I, I guess I'll just take maybe a blue bar. Make it totally. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because the translucent background doesn't work very well with the translucent background doesn't work well with this kind of thing. This is my body. Uh I don't think I'll use a glass panel here. I mean the last time I used a glass panel was when the background was outer space. So it looked pretty nice. But over here, because my background is like kind of flashy, I should I should go for something simple over here. Should go for maybe like a metal panel. Yeah, I think I think this metal panel looks good. Just adjust the the color a bit and it will be fine. Yeah. So now, uh, one thing I don't quite like is the text. The text font is a little too like shout out to your face kind of fonts for for a game. I mean, for the buttons and the title is fine, but for a game, I will need a font that does doesn't shout out as much to describe to you like what you should do. So I don't quite like that font. We have to choose another font that is. Not so bold. School maybe. I, yeah, but I would like to have it with a kind of tech kind of ring to it. Yeah. But I like it to have a tech ring. So we need to Retro, maybe, maybe retro is good. Oh, wow, I spent 50 minutes sitting. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be tough to try to do it all in one day. I mean, all in one hour. It'll be tough to do it. Western, maybe, Western. Western Bang Bang. Oh, this is quite cool for like kind of a game for like cowboys. Yeah, you can use Western Bang Bang. Yeah, I don't think this fits with the theme of tech. Alien, but Alien, I scared they come out with like, yeah, this kind. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, I love this kind of runes. And yeah, these dingbacks, I don't think this are uh, like proper words. Oh. This one will be good for like uh, adventure game that you are trying to find runes on. Yeah, I realize fonts are actually quite important for a game because uh, they kind of help to set the mood. 
God of War. Is this really the God of War font? It's quite nice, though, whoever did this. Yeah, I kind of like this dash. Yeah, I should aim for the 100% free ones. Then you can you know use this to publish your game if, if you want to. There's, there's quite a lot here, let's just try. Oh, nice, Dragon Force. No Dragon Force, Dragon Force is the one that it's through the fire and the flames. I think that's Dragon Force. Should have known. You know, I'm just thinking, would it be better if I teach people uh, without using the, the vertical layout group? Uh, see if I don't use this vertical layout group. If I change the ratio, can this still work? Uh, maybe I shouldn't use vertical layout group. Uh, it is confusing. I mean, I could just tell them put a head here, put a body. Okay, and then at the end for a button because if you were to use vertical layout groups to, to teach, right, it will potentially be confusing. Okay, so this is a glass panel. Uh I think it's fine, the button here is fine. You can you can still keep this. Yeah, I mean for beginners, let's not do vertical layout groups. We just do Okay, maybe for this thing, in case at the, bu the button wise, right, I can give them a horizontal layout group, but I shouldn't do vertical layout groups for the main thing. So this can be the action selection. The cheesy name, action selection. And here I can do a horizontal layout group. Yeah, but over here, actually, a vertical layout group would be great. Just that I don't know whether it will be too confusing for people. Yeah, maybe I, I should still stick to vertical layout group. But then because it's it's the easiest to like actually create stuff. Yeah. Maybe here the spacing we do a fifty. Too much ten. Twenty. Yeah, I like vertical layout groups a lot. They help to simplify game creation by Like helping to do certain things well. Middle center spacing can be about 20. So we just want two, two actions for people to choose the left and right. Yeah, so the left and right action will be good. Now I'll need to shift these buttons to centralize them to the center of the screen. So I thought the child alignment or middle center would be good enough. Apparently not. Uh, it could be that this action selection, the, the game object width is not sufficient as I suspected. So we could have two buttons of two different colors. Like this one can be white, this one can be black. Like, you know, evil and what do you call that? Good and evil. I want them to distinguish. Like, okay, maybe one can be like to match the theme, 
one can be orange. Kind of like orange a lot. Okay, orange. And this one will be green, I guess. Green. Actually, it should be like white. White really matches very well with the theme. Or maybe the two buttons can be the same color. Yeah, maybe it can be the same, same color. Yeah, here I like to prefect my buttons actually. So I should make this into a prefect. Delete this. Yeah, I should still teach vertical and horizontal layout groups. It helps to make the thing nicer. Okay, so you see over here we have a, a, a game display. Layout is all the way here. The, means that the, the body is taking up too much space. Oops, wrong. Maybe I stretch but do about a width of 10 to 20. Like that. Top bottom also 20. Yeah, maybe 10. It's quite action one and action two. Okay, maybe we should. Uh, I'll just stick to action one and action two first. Now I need the the text in the body. Yeah. So this this is basically a example of a simple room. Okay. And actually like right now I should also be able to do a script in order to change scene. So So scene changer, what we can do is using Unity engine dot scene management. In scene changer, what we do is whenever we call the function, we will change the scene. So public what scene string scene name scene manager dot Okay. We can use a Unity scene management to change scene. Scene manage scene manager dot load scene. And then we put a scene name here. Yeah, so that's what we need to do. Okay. And now that's all for scene changer. We can put this back into the buttons. So in each of the buttons, we can put a scene changer. We can put it here. Okay. So actually, what I should do is I should create a game object. Actually, I can just put my scene changer on the button itself. I'm going to use this button all the time. So I can put the scene changer script on the button itself. Okay. So on click. I can put this button here. Okay. Scene changer. Change load scene. Then over here will be room two. 
okay maybe i'll do is i will i'll save this as prefab prefab so that it override here as well so when you go to here you will see that this room two we can actually change it to room three yeah so in addition to just changing the room we can also change the text in on the script but i think it's easier if we just edit it directly from the text here yeah so okay for now we need to okay this is not exactly necessary but it's kind of like a nice font to go with this so i think just now i, I was kind of happy with dash so yeah free for personal use which means that you cannot monetize this game. Okay. But it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's a nice font actually. <laughs> so we have dash, let's load it. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. I need a style that is more typewriter based. Grid, yeah, maybe grid would work. Without the grid, of course, like I, I like the. Uh, Where and it's still too in your face, so LCD perhaps. Yeah, this kind of looks kind of digital. Something that will be easy to read because people will be using this text for a very long time. And it will form the bulk of the program actually. Tesla. <laughs> How about contracts? Hemi head I used for a, a game before. It's pretty cool. I use contracts. Let's put it here. So this body, the text, we can use we can use contract. We can use contracts to to do this. Oh, okay, this is not bad. Yeah, but I guess the font is so big. Our max size we have to tune it down like that. It's not not, not bad. Not bad. Okay, so uh, over here, the shadow here, I realize the color is kind of ugly. Uh, maybe we just make the shadow black. Okay, and this calls for an updating of the prefab. Okay, so over here, this time to show you all this thing called build settings. File build settings, you can see that there are two scenes. Okay, uh, now there's only one scene. Should put in room one here as well. Okay, so so now in main menu, okay, start button. Okay, we don't want to like do any menu or anything in this start button. But what we want to do is okay. Actually, I should put my tech background inside the canvas also. Uh, let's see whether it still works. Okay, so this this is what we do. Okay, we have a button here, okay, and the button we're gonna put in the script to change the scene directly on the button itself. Okay, and we put the button here. On click scene changer change scene okay and then the scene name will be room one yeah because we will go to room one directly okay so 
So here, let me just duplicate room 1 and room 2. Room 2, room 3. Of course, it will be easier if we have like uh, we can do everything in script, and then you don't have to like do one by one this room. Is this nice? Uh, like, is this effect good? This blending effect, or is it kind of weird? I think it's quite nice actually. Yeah, I mean it's an artifact of the button, but it looks pretty alright actually. Yeah, this action here, the green color looks bad right now, so we, we have to change it. And the good thing about prefab is that if you change the button itself, you don't actually need to change all the buttons. You just need to change one. So like over here, my button color, maybe instead of, instead of white, I want to go for a blue sort of feeling, a dark blue feeling, like this, a dark blue feeling. It is possible to just change one button and then the rest will just take cue from it. So you, this will be my button that everyone takes cue from. So I think I think something like this is better. apply all ah nice I, I like it okay so what we need to do is maybe we just duplicate this thing it's called a loose, loose state. So, I mean, I will change the picture later, but in the loose state, what we'll do is we'll just put in the view loose. Just centralize, and the button can be a try again. Oh, here can be main menu. Yeah, we can make it go back to main menu, and that's when this script is very good because we can actually just put main menu. Okay, and then we can also do a separate room like that. It's called win. Okay, and in this room win, we can say you win. Yeah, it's a it's a very simple room. So here will be you win. And then the same thing here at the bottom is the main menu. You don't have to change that. Okay, and you can see that the button here has already the characteristic of main menu. So this is a U-Win screen. Okay. Here the menu, the button should link to button should link to room one. Okay. Room one and room two and room three. Can do some default stuff okay but basically let me just set the action selection first action one go to room two action two goes to room okay maybe here we'll go to loose okay so it's a very simple room room two Room 2, the body text can be you walk towards the light, the light engulfs you. you, you do. Okay, then this one is maybe uh, option, option can be.
so maybe the I can switch off the light so no need to you losing okay and the action thing of the light will bring you to the next room room three okay and then in room three the body you are so you have found the source of the light it is by it is a reflection of the world outside you. You realize you are still in a dream. You do. Okay, this is a crappy story, but you know. <laughs> okay, the first one will lead to lose, and then the second one will lead to win. So, what would my action be? So. If you wake up, yes, I'll I'll have the action here. So wake up. Yeah, somehow living in the dream will make you win the game. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. I realize this isn't exactly very tech related, but. Okay, so over here, uh, the first one could be you walk towards the light. Second one will be... Second action will be run away from the light. So right now, I need to I need to add in the stuff to my build settings because I haven't created the stuff to build settings yet. So uh, let me go to file build settings, and then I'll just put in everything, all these scenes here. Lose room one, room two. Room three, room so actually the, the bad thing about doing it in this order like that is that every time you create a new room you need to do one more room manually. Yeah. If you do everything in script, you just need to update the script, which um can be done. I guess for beginners it's uh, better to just you know do by this room one by one. Where is it? The room walk towards the light. You lose. Think of the light. Live in dream. <laughs> alright, alright. Okay, I guess uh, that's all for now. Later when we come back, like after lunch, I will continue coding it uh, to add the sound effects. And yeah, that's all for the game. Hope you enjoyed this session and see ya.